Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here. Weather in five, five days and five minutes. Brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware, your go to place this spring for spring cleanups and for landscaping your home and yard into absolute perfection. 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. And that is in southwest Suffolk County, north of the Sunrise Highway and the Southern State, and south of the Long Island Expressway. And they, ins- and they serve the entire tri-state area of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut with the lowest prices anywhere on mulch, topsoil, whatever it is you need. So head over to Omni. 631-756-1125 is the phone number, and the website is omnitruevalue.com. It is a very, very cold day in the northeast and northern mid-Atlantic states. We hit bottom this morning, mostly in upper in the upper teens and low 20s. And this is bone dry air. I was looking at the dew points, which are running near zero or even below zero in some instances. So we're going to have very, very dry conditions and very, very cold conditions today. There are some patchy clouds showing up on the satellite loop across the northeast uh, coming in off the Great Lakes. You can kind of see them in banded form there. That's going to start to diminish as we go through the day. Uh, we will have well, I, what I would describe as ineffective sunshine and temperatures today. There are going to be areas from northeastern Pennsylvania to uh, just north uh, and northwest of New York City, for example, that have a tough time getting back to 30, while most places should, at least to the south of there, uh, should make it up into the low and middle 30s. And you start to go down into southernmost Pennsylvania and point southward, upper 30s to near 40. But we are talking here about temperatures that are running 20 or more degrees below average for this time of year. This is a very, very cold uh, air mass. And some localized records were probably set this morning. And we're going to check those out tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, which will be at 730 uh, Eastern Time. Quick check of the radar, uh, not a whole lot happening in the northeastern part of the U.S. It's still getting a little bit of lake effect snows coming in off of Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Uh, there is some activity going on in California. We have a uh, rather strong upper air trough that's coming into the, uh, California with heavy rains uh, down um, well, almost, uh, but not quite to Los Angeles, and we're seeing that move eastward. Also seeing some rains uh, in southernmost California and southwestern Arizona, and then on up into the Pacific Northwest. The vast majority of the country today is going to be very, very quiet. So the good news is that this time of year, when you're this cold and it's this extreme, it has to bounce higher. It just does. And it bounces higher relatively quickly. So we're going to start to see that process happen over the next couple of days. But that's going to set us up for the next cold front on Thursday. And the Storm Prediction Center in their long range is still indicating, and this is from the overnight forecast, these will be updated during the day today, uh, still indicating a uh, risk of severe weather from uh, eastern North Carolina, northeastward into uh, central New Jersey. The 15% risk would be the equivalent of slight risk, so you could probably uh, see the marginal risk go further north into the Hudson Valley, perhaps, and probably into at least southwestern New England, based on what I'm seeing, and also extending further south down into South Carolina, Georgia, on the opposite end. And again, this is for Thursday. And whenever the, you know, it's, it's been my experience that when SPC starts putting severe weather risk in their day four to eight forecast, which I would describe as their long range outlook, and they have uh, had this in there for the last couple of days, it's probably worth paying attention to. Uh, the other areas that I would point out uh, will be uh, with regards to getting there, and that's going to impact another area in the U.S., a different area, and that is going to be the southern part of the U.S. Last week, uh, we saw severe weather based uh, develop uh, over the course of a couple of days from Texas to the southeastern part of the U.S. We're going to see the same thing this week. Uh, as for Tuesday, there's no severe weather uh, being indicated for today. As for Tuesday, we're seeing a slight risk from uh, central Texas uh, northeastward into eastern Kansas, western Missouri. So a rather large area of slight risk. And that's going to come, by the way, uh, with a 5% tornado risk in central Oklahoma and north central Texas. Uh, we'll move on to day three. And this is going to be for Wednesday into Thursday, and then the sh- the uh, risk area, and this was also in the long range, by the way, uh, back a few days ago, SPC indicating an enhanced risk of severe weather, and there you have it, a fairly large 
area of enhanced risk from Louisiana across mo- almost all of Mississippi and a good chunk of western Alabama, the slight risk pushing up into southern Illinois and into southern Indiana. So this is Wednesday into Thursday, and then we have uh, the risk being indicated still in the long range for the mid-Atlantic and maybe even points further north for Thursday. So here's how it works for the rest of today. Uh, temperatures today, as we noted earlier, are going to be struggling all day long. Uh, but this is the core of this current cold air mass. It should be uh, moving out in short order. There's warm air that's going to start pushing eastward. And you see it there with uh, a little area of showers uh, that comes through Wednesday morning. Uh, or early Wednesday morning for a couple of hours. It doesn't amount to much, and it may even be in the form of some wet snow and sleet uh, in areas uh, north and west of the coast to upstate New York. We're talking about a very narrow band here. So you're going from 30s to the other side of the warm front where we're going to see 60s and 70s, and you see how the uh, the model swings a cold front through uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning into eastern Texas and across the central plains and the middle Mississippi Valley. And then we have the potential for an, uh, a, a more widespread severe weather outbreak later Wednesday into Thursday into the Gulf states. Then it shifts eastward uh, on Thursday to the mid-Atlantic and, and points uh, northward on, on the one side up at the southern New England and on the other side perhaps down at the southern Georgia and northern Florida. So that's going to be our next round of weather. Once that front goes by, uh, it will turn cold again or colder for Friday and into next weekend, but we are not seeing the same type of extreme air mass uh, like we're seeing right now. So yeah, we'll see temperatures uh, head south. We'll probably go near or a little bit below average uh, over the weekend. And right now it's looking dry. There's a little disturbance on Sunday that's uh, moving uh, across the Great Lakes, the southern Great Lakes, to uh, the mid-Atlantic coast. It looks to be very weak. We'll see how the future runs of the model handle this. Uh, but you know what, folks? If you're looking for some lo- long, st- a long stretch of warm spring weather, not, you're not going to see it in the type of pattern that we are in right now. Weather in 5 brought to you by Omni True Value Hardware at 1226 North Wellwood Avenue in West Babylon, New York. 631-756-1125 is the phone number. And the website is omnitruevalue.com. I just want to show you, uh, with respect to what's going on uh, with the upper air, and while the map is setting up, let me just remind everybody that we are going to see, and we're going to, we're going to cover this, uh, more uh, tonight on the Joe and Joe Weather Show, and that's at uh, 7.30 Eastern Time on my YouTube channel, which is Joe Chaffee. So we're looking here at the 10,000-foot level of the atmosphere. And uh, for my Patreon members, I wrote a little bit more about this, so you could sort of use this as a starter, starting point and then read the post from earlier this morning to follow up on it. Uh, but uh, what we have, essentially, is a very, very sharp upper trough. And you can see it here. Uh, that sort of you know V shape that's coming down. So whenever you have something that has that V that's pretty tight, uh, it tell, it's telling you that the uh, the trough is on the strong side. But what I'm I'm more interested in is the fact that what the model is generating here and these these dark brown spots that you see, those are jet streaks, uh, bursts of of strong winds of 50, 60 knots or even higher. And uh, it's in that zone that we're likely to see some thunderstorms, and it's in that zone that we'll have to watch to see whether some of those strong, gusty winds, we're looking at about the 9,000-foot level here at the atmosphere, we'll have to see <clears throat> if those is the potential for those winds to mix down at the surface, at the surface uh, when thunderstorms develop to create a very, very strong wind gusts. So that's what we'll be uh, paying attention to. And, of course, the other issue is going to be, uh, is this a situation where uh, we're going to see uh, potentially some rotation in some of this stuff uh, with these thunderstorms? And I think uh, it's way too early to, to say that. That's a super short-range issue. Uh, we'll probably start to, to look at that a little uh, more carefully as we maybe head by into Wednesday. I think maybe we'll get some idea whether SPC might indicate some tornado risk uh, with this. So that's going to be really the story for this week. One strong cold front, very cold to start. Warm ahead of that front. Where Thursday, we probably will see temperatures uh, try to make it up into the 60s and 70s in many locations. And then it, it will turn chilly, but not extremely cold behind the front for Friday and the weekend. So there you have it in a nutshell. Uh, and we will uh, see you tonight at 730. Have a great day, everybody.